Hi everyone, this is gonna be a mini lecture on disjoint sets. And I'll be covering the algorithms that Hug went over in lecture just a bit quicker. And I'll also be talking about path compression at the end. Okay, so the fundamental problem that disjoint sets are trying to solve is let's say that we have n elements. I like to think about, let's say that we have n people and these people can form groups, okay? And then we wanna create some sort of data structure that will keep track of two operations. The first operation is that we're gonna to try to connect two groups together, okay? How that's gonna work is that if we ever call connect on A and B, it merges the groups that A and B are part of into one bigger group, okay? And is connected A and B is saying, are A and B part of the same group, right? So let's kind of like walk through a couple examples here so suppose that we have five people, okay? And whenever we work with disjoint sets, we always store like these people as numbers from zero to n minus one, okay? So in this case, if n is equal to five, we have zero, one, two, three, four are the people that we want to connect and check is connected on, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is call connect on one, two, which merges one and two together. Okay, so now my apologies, let's make them the same. Okay, so now one and two are part of the same group. Then the next thing that we're gonna do is say connect of two and zero. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is that originally zero is all by himself, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna merge two's group with zero's group. So how that's gonna look is now it's gonna be like this, right? It's one big group here, okay? Then the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna call some is connected method calls, right? Is connected three and four, are three and four part of the same group? No, they're not. So this would give us false. And is connected of zero and one, we see here that zero, one, and two are all part of the same group. So then zero, one are connected. And the really important thing to take away from this is that we never actually connected a zero and one together. But what we did do is we connected one to two and zero to two. So then zero and one are connected, right? So this is actually not like a really easy problem to solve. It may seem a bit easy in the beginning, but it's actually like a bit trickier. So let's try to explore some possibilities of algorithms to solve this problem, okay? The first algorithm we're gonna talk about is called quick find. So this is the first algorithm that Hug introduces in lecture. And how it works is that we're gonna say that each group is going to have a leader of that group, okay? So in this example, we have three groups. We have the zero, one, two group, the three group and the four group, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna store an array, right? All of these implementations have an internal array, okay? And what we're gonna say is that we have a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the value of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is going to be the leader of their group, okay? Since 0, 1, and 2 all belong to the same group, they will all have the same value, okay? So in this situation, since 3 and 4 are both their own group independently, I'm going to say the value for 3 is 3, the value for 4 is 4. Then for the group corresponding to 0, 1, 2, it doesn't really matter which one of 0, 1, 2 we choose, so long as they're all the same. So I'm just gonna say these all have value zero. And now what we've successfully done, which is really cool, is somehow we've captured this relationship into an array, right? We've said in this relationship, there's three groups, the group of 0, 1, 2, the group of three, and the group of four, and how we represent this in this array is we say the first group are these three zeros, right? Corresponding to zero, one, and two are all part of group zero. And then the only element of group three is number three and the only element of group four is number four, right? So with this in mind, let's walk, to, walk through how quick find will execute the two operations connect and is connected, okay? So first, Let's explore how quick find will perform connect operations. So I really recommend before you guys actually like see the solution 
try to think about if I were quick find, like how would I implement these connect operations, right? How would I impl implement is connected, okay? So is connected is actually really easy for quick find, so we'll get to it next. But for connect, it's a bit trickier. Suppose that we want to connect two and three together. Here's how connect works. It's very naive. What we're going to say is that are two and three already connected, right? Are their values the same? If so, there's nothing we need to do. Let's move on to the next, like whatever method call. But in this case, we see the values aren't the same. So what I'm going to say is arbitrarily, let's decide to change everybody in two's group to merge with three's group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that two belongs to group zero. So let's go through this array and see every time we see a zero, we're going to change that through a three. So more specifically, what we're going to do is we'll change these first three elements to three, right? That's how connect works. If we want to think about is connected, let's say is connected of three and four. How that's going to work, this is very straightforward, is that we're going to check is the value at index three equal to the value at index four? If it is, that means they're part of the same group and they're connected. If they're different, they're not connected, right? And every time we discuss one of these algorithms, from this point on in the class, we want to ask ourselves, what's the runtime of this algorithm, right? So you can think about the connect algorithm will take us big O of n time because we have to iterate through the entirety of the array, right? Is connected will take us constant time because we only have to check those two indices, right? Cool. So we can kind of see here that quick find does really well for is connected, but it's pretty awful for connect. So is there a better way of approaching this, right? So now this is a very radical shift, but what our next idea is, let's represent each connected component as a tree, okay? So now if we have, let's use the same example from before, where we have zero, one, two as one group, we should just imagine zero and one, two as just kind of like a blob, right? They're one connected component, but we're not actually like imagining them as anything. Now what we're gonna say is let's imagine zero, one, and two, their connected component as a tree, okay? So let's just say that we have zero as the top and then one and two are children of zero. So this corresponds to one connected component. The other two connected components we have are three and four. So now what we're doing is we're describing each group as a tree, right? And why is this helpful? Now when we translate these groups to the array, what we're going to do, which is really cool, is we're going to say the value of each element is its parent in the corresponding tree, okay? If an element is the root, we're going to say its value is just going to be the number itself. So what that means is that the value of zero is zero since it's the root, the value of one is also zero, and the value of two is also zero. So in this case, it happened to be that's like very similar to the previous example, but it's actually like showing us a bit more information, okay? Because we're now describing these trees and then three and four are like so. So now let's say that, I don't know, let's say, say suppose that we had a fifth element and we decide, actually no, here's the example we'll go for. Let's say that we do connect of three and zero, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect. Okay, I'm gonna walk through these steps really carefully. So just let's go through them together. So if we wanna do connect of three and zero, there's a few steps that we need to do. Okay, step one is we wanna find the root of each tree, okay? So what we'll do is we'll say, let's go all the way up to the top of both of these trees. In this case, it happens to be that zero and three are already at the roots. So the next thing we wanna do is 
we want to say, let's set one root to be the child of the other root. Set one root be a child of the other. Okay, so how that's going to work here is in this case, we're just going to do it randomly and we'll see how we can improve upon that in a way to quick union. But we're going to set one root to be a child of the other root. So how that's going to look is let's just say that zero is going to be a child of three. So how we're going to represent that is, give me a second. Let's just say that now zero is a child of three, okay? So all that we need to do in the code, which is really, really cool, is that we only change the value of zero to now be three, right? And what we can see here is that now when we perform a connect operation, we don't have to iterate through the entire array, right? That was the problem from quick find. All we need to do now is find the root of each tree, right? And then set one root to be the child of the other root, okay? But you guys might notice that in general, when you work with trees, we want them to be bushy, right? What does bushy mean? We want them to not be like spindly and looking like a link list because that's terrible for runtime. So how we're gonna improve upon that in a way to quick union is that when we combine two groups, instead of randomly setting one tree to be under the other tree, we're gonna say, let's always take the smaller tree and put the root of that tree to be the child of the bigger roots tree, right? So what I mean by that is suppose that we have the same example from before, right? Suppose that we have zero, one, two, three, and four. And now what we're gonna do is when we try connecting this group to this group, in other words, when we perform connect of zero and three, instead of setting this tree to be under the root of three, we should do the other way around, right? Because then it'll be more efficient in the future, okay? So all that we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, when we want to merge two trees together, we're gonna look at the sizes of each tree and set the tree that is smaller, right? In this case, that corresponds to this tree. We're gonna set the root of that tree to be a child of the root of the larger tree, right? And what we can see here is that it works exactly the same as a regular quick union. Now we just have to keep track of the sizes somehow. But how can we keep track of the sizes? Well, this is really cool. But notice that when we have a root, we're not really storing much information about that root at its value. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say the value of every root is going to be the negative of its size. So since zero currently, prior to this connection, is in a group of size three, the value of index zero is going to be negative three because it's gonna to correspond to the size of zero's tree. And then with three and four, we can say they're negative one and negative one. And the reason we use the negative value is that we wanna differentiate it from an actual tree, right? From an actual like parent, because we know negative numbers can be parents. Okay, so that is all for way to quick unions. And if you want to quickly think about connect and is connected here. Okay, I just want to walk through these two really quickly. In connect, we're doing the same exact thing from a quick union, but now we're going to set over here, instead of setting one root to be a child of the other, we're going to check, set the smaller root, right? In terms of smaller, I mean the root with a smaller size, okay? And then that's how connect works in terms of is connected. All we have to do is get the roots of both elements and see if they're the same, right? So all we're doing is checking if roots 
of 0 and 3 are the same. Okay, so the last thing we're going to discuss is an optimization that's called path compression. Okay, so in the algorithms we've discussed so far in the way to quick union, we oftentimes have to get the root of a given tree. Right, suppose that we have the following tree. I'm just making it really big. Okay, say that we have this following tree. Okay, and then we want to check if five and three are connected. What we will do to check if five and three are connected is that we will go and find the root of the five tree and the root of the three tree, right? And see that they're both zero and they're the same, okay? So this process of finding the root of a given element is encompassed in this method called find, okay? So find of a vertex finds the root of that vertex's tree, okay? So what we're going to do now is really, really cool. I think it's a really subtle trick is that our end goal with all of these algorithms is to make them as efficient as possible, right? So to make this more efficient, we want ideally all of these nodes to be directly under zero, right? This is the best case possibility. If the tree was like as flat as possible, right? So this is like a really, really cool tree that like we want to somehow get to, okay? So what we're going to do is that if we ever call find on a given vertex, this is really cool. What we're going to do is we're gonna set all of the nodes on the branch coming from the root down to this vertex. We're setting all of these nodes now are going to be direct children of the root, okay? So how that's going to look is that if we're ever trying to find the root of five, right? The root of the tree that five belongs to, what we're going to do is as we're going up, we're setting all of the nodes on the path from five to zero to now be direct children of the root, okay? The reason this works is that if we're ever iterating up this tree, what we can do is we can say that every person we've seen so far as we iterate upwards, let's set your parent to be the ultimate root at the end, okay? And why this is cool is now notice that five is a direct child of zero and same with two. So our tree is flatter and it's more efficient in the future if we ever wanna check what's the root of the tree that five belongs to, okay? So this process is called path compression. Just to reiterate once more. Well, how path compression works is that if we're ever trying to find the root of a vertex's tree, what we usually do is we start from this vertex and we keep iterating up its tree, right? Now, what we're going to do is an added optimization is since we're already going up this branch, we're gonna set all of the nodes along this branch, their parent to be the root, okay? So this is all that path compression really is. It oftentimes like confuses students, but it's not too like complicated. It's all it's saying is we have a branch, all the nodes on that branch, let's set your parent to be the root, okay? So that is all for this mini lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it and good luck on the discussion, on the discussion worksheet.